Psalms 119, read out of the Amplified Bible Version by Nathan Reynolds. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are the undefiled, the upright, truly sincere, and blameless in the way of the revealed will of God or order their conduct and conversation in the law of the Lord, the whole of God's revealed will. Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied are they who keep his testimonies and who seek, inquire for, and of him and crave him with the whole heart. Yes, they do no unrighteousness, no willful wandering from his precepts. They walk in his ways. As an example, 1 John 3, 9, those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. 1 John 5, 18, we know that God's children do not make a practice of sinning for God's son holds them securely and the evil one cannot touch them. You have commanded us to keep your precepts that we should observe them diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed and established to observe your statutes, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. Then shall I not be put to shame by failing to inherit your promises when I have respect to all your commandments. I will praise and give thanks to you with uprightness of heart when I learn by sanctified experience your righteous judgments, your decisions against and punishment for particular lines of thought and conduct. I will keep your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself according to your word, conforming his life to it. With my whole heart have I sought you inquiring for and of you and yearning for you. Oh, let me not wander or step aside, either in ignorance or willfully, from your commandments. As an example, 2 Chronicles 15, 15, all in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him, and the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. Your word have I laid up in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips have I declared and recounted all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and have respect to your ways, that is, the paths of life marked out by your law. As an example, Psalms 104, 34, may all my thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live, and I will observe your word, that is, hearing, receiving, loving and obeying it. Open my eyes that I may behold or look at the wondrous things out of your law. I am a stranger and a temporary resident on earth. Hide not your commandments from me. First Chronicles 29:15 says it this way, we are here for only a moment, visitors and strangers in the land as our ancestors were before us. Our days on earth are like a passing shadow, gone so soon without a trace. Psalms 39, 12 says, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cries for help. Don't ignore my tears, for I am your guest, a traveler passing through as my ancestors were before me. And in the New Testament in Hebrews 11:13, all these people died, talking about the people of faith, still believing what God had promised them. They did not receive what was promised, but they saw it all from a distance and welcomed it. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads here on the earth. My heart is breaking with longing 
that it has for your ordinances and judgments at all times. You rebuke the proud and arrogant, the accursed ones who err and wander from your commandment. Take away from me reproach and contempt, for I keep your testimonies. Princes also sat and talked against me, but your servant meditated on your statutes. Your testimonies also are my delight and my counselors. My earthly life cleaves to the dust. Revive and stimulate me according to your word. Psalms 143.11 says, For the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life. Because of your faithfulness, bring me out of this distress. I have declared my ways and opened my griefs to you, and you listen to me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on and talk of your marvelous works. In Psalms 145, 5 and 6, it says, I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. My life dissolves and weeps itself away from heaviness. Raise me up and strengthen me according to the promise of your word. Remove from me what is to you the way of falsehood and unfaithfulness and graciously impart your law to me. I have chosen the way of truth and faithfulness. Your ordinances have I set before me. I cleave to your testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. I will not merely walk, but run the way of your commandments when you give me a heart that is willing. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end steadfastly. Give me understanding that I may keep your law. Yes, I will observe it with my whole heart. Proverbs 2.6 says, For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And then in the New Testament, James says in 1 and 5, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Now continuing, Make me go in the path of your commandments, for in them do I delight. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness, that is like robbery, sensuality, unworthy riches. This is in reference to what Ezekiel the prophet said in 3331. So my people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. Jesus said in Mark 7, 21 and 22, For within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. 1 Timothy 6, 10, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Hebrews 13, 5, don't love money, be satisfied with what you have, for God has said, I will never fail you, I will never abandon you, and this is meaning that you have something worth more than money, you have the promise of God's companionship and oversight and protection. Continuing, turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, that is idols and idolatry, and restore me to vigorous life and health in your ways. Establish your word and confirm your promise to your servant, which is for those who reverently fear and devotedly worship you. Deuteronomy 10.12 explains this. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? He requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases Him and love Him and serve Him with all your heart and soul. Psalms 96 9 adds, Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Now, continuing, turn away my reproach, which I fear and dread, for your ordinances are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. That means, Lord, look upon me. I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, give me renewed life. 
Let your mercy and loving kindness come also to me. O oh Lord, even your salvation according to your promise. Then shall I have an answer for those who taunt and reproach me. For I lean on, rely on, and trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I hope in your ordinances. I will keep your law continually, forever and ever, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying it. And I will walk at liberty and at ease, for I have sought and inquired for and desperately required your precepts. I will speak of your testimonies also before kings and will not be put to shame, for I will delight myself in your commandments, which I love. My hands also will I lift up in fervent supplication to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember the word and promise to your servant in which you have caused me to hope fervently. This is my comfort and consolation in my affliction, that your word has revived me and given me life. Romans 15, 4 refers to this by saying such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us and the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. Continuing, the proud have had me greatly in derision, yet have I not declined in my interest in or turned aside from your law. When I have earnestly recalled your ordinances from of old, O Lord, I have taken comfort. Burning indignation, terror, and sadness seize upon me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I have earnestly remembered your name, O Lord, in the night, and I have observed your law. This I have had as the gift of your grace and as my reward, that I have kept your precepts, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. You are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreated your favor with my whole heart. Be merciful and gracious to me according to your promise. I considered my ways. I turned my feet to obey your testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked have enclosed and ensnared me, I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all those who fear, revere, and worship you, and of those who observe and give heed to your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your mercy and loving kindness. Teach me your statutes. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now your word do I keep, hearing it, receiving it, loving it, and obeying it. You are good and kind and do good. Teach me your statutes. The arrogant and godless have put together a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their hearts are fat as grease, their minds are dull and brutal, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law from your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Your hands have made me cunningly, your hands have made me cunningly fashioned and established me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who reverently and worshipfully fear you will see me and be glad because I have hoped in your word and tarried for it. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right and righteous and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. A reference to this is in Hebrews 12.10. For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best that they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in His holiness. Now continuing. Let I pray you, your merciful kindness and steadfast love be for my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your tender mercy and loving kindness come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the proud be put to shame, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate 
on your precepts. Let those who reverently and worshipfully fear you turn to me and those who have known your testimonies. Let my heart be sound, that is, sincere and wholehearted and blameless in your statutes that I may not be put to shame. My soul languishes and grows faint for your salvation, but I hope in your word. My eyes fail watching for the fulfillment of your promise. I say, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a bottle or a wineskin, blackened and shriveled in the smoke in which it hangs, yet do I not forget your statutes. A commentary here on what this means. The wine bottles of the East were skins. Rosenmuller tells us that it was a custom of the ancients to hang skins of wine in the smoke of fire for very much the same reason that some people place a bottle of wine on the hearth over a fireplace in order to mellow the wine by a gradual and moderate warmth and to bring it to an earlier perfection. And in that custom, the psalmist finds an illustration of the meaning and of the mercy of the affliction to which he has been exposed. They have been sent to act on him like a warm smoke on the wine, to refine, mellow, and ripen his character, and because under them all he has refused to part with his faith in God and duty, because he has been true to God and God's statutes, they have had their intended and proper effect upon him. Continuing, How many are the days of your servant which he must endure? When will you judge those who pursue and persecute me? This is also reflected in Revelation 6.10 where those in heaven who had been martyred said, They shouted to the Lord and said, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge the people who belong to this world and avenge our blood for what they have done to us? This faith means that they know that God is going to bring justice down on the heads of those who have persecuted them. The godless and arrogant have dug pitfalls for me, men who do not conform to your law. All your commandments are faithful and sure. The godless pursue and persecute me with falsehood. Help me, Lord. They have almost consumed me upon the earth, but I forsook not your precepts. According to your steadfast love, give life to me. Then I will keep the testimony of your mouth, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying it. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven, which means it stands firm as the heavens. The psalmist in Psalm 89, 2 says it this way, Your unfailing love will last forever. Your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 34, I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene until all these things take place. Verse 35, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. 1 Peter 1 25, but the word of the Lord remains forever, and that word is the good news that was preached to you. Continuing, your faithfulness is from generation to generation. You have established the earth, and it stands fast. All, that is, the whole universe, are your servants. Therefore, they continue to this day according to your ordinances. And Jeremiah had a reference to this same idea by explaining how God governs the universe. Jeremiah 33, 25. But this is what the Lord says. I would no more reject my people than I would change my laws that govern night and day, earth and sky. Continuing. Unless your law had been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts. How can I? For it is by them you have quickened me or granted me life or made me alive. Quickened is an old word meaning to make alive. I am yours, therefore save me, your very own. For I have sought or I have inquired of and for your precepts and required them as my urgent need. The psalmist in 42.1 says, As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. Continuing. The wicked wait for me to destroy me, but I will consider your testimonies. I have seen that everything that is human has its limits and end, no matter how extensive, noble, and excellent it is. 
but your commandment is exceedingly broad and extends without limits into eternity. This reference to everything human having its limits is also buttressed in Romans 3, 10 through 19. As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise. No one is seeking God. All have turned away and all have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. Their talk is foul, like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with lies. Snake venom drips from their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. They rush to commit murder. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. They have no fear of God at all. Obviously, the law applies to those to whom it was given, for its purpose is to keep people from having excuses and to show that the entire world is guilty before God. Continuing, Oh, how love I your law. It is my meditation all the day. This is a reference to Psalms 1-2. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. Continuing, You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for your words are ever before me. I have better understanding and deeper insight than all my teachers because your testimonies are my meditation, or your testimonies are what I think about. I understand more than the aged because I keep your precepts, meaning I hear them, receive them, love them, and obey them. I have restrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep your word. This restraint that he's talking about is also referenced in Proverbs 1.15 where it says, My child, don't go along with them, the wicked. Stay far away from their paths. Continuing, I have not turned aside from your ordinances, for you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste sweeter than honey to my mouth. Psalms 19.10 says, They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. Proverbs 8.11 says, For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with it. Continuing, Through your precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is referenced also in Proverbs 6.23. For their command is a lamp and their instruction a light. For their corrective discipline is the way to life. Continuing. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it that I will keep your righteous ordinances, hearing them, receiving them, loving them, and obeying them. I am sorely afflicted. Renew and quicken me or give me life, O Lord, according to your word. That life comes through the word of God. It revives us. Accept, I beseech you, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. Hosea 14, 2 references this. Bring your confession and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and graciously receive us so that we may offer you our praises. That's what free will offerings are. Free will meaning we express them from our own will. We are not saying them because you told us to say them. And even the New Testament confirms that this is what God wants. In Hebrews 13, 15, it says, Therefore, let us, that is the church, offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. Continuing, My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. This phrase means, I am close to death at all times. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. Deuteronomy 33, 4 says, Moses gave us the Lord's instruction, the special possession of the people of Israel. Continuing, I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever, even to the end. 
I hate the thoughts of undecided, that is in religion, double-minded people, but your law do I love. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. This reference to a hiding place is also found in Psalms 32, 7. For you are my hiding place. You protect me from trouble. You surround me with songs of victory. And then also in Psalms 91, 1, it says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Continuing. Depart from me, you evildoers, that I may keep the commandments of my God, hearing them, receiving them, loving them, and obeying them. Psalms 139.19 says, O God, if only you would destroy the wicked, get out of my life, you murderers. Continuing, uphold me according to your promise that I may live and let me not be put to shame in my hope. This is referenced in Psalms 25.2, which says, I trust in you, my God, Do not let me be disgraced or let my enemies rejoice in my defeat. And then in the New Testament, it brings it out so beautifully to those of us in faith. It says in Romans 5, 5, And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. And then in Romans 10, 11, it says, As the scripture tells us, Quote, anyone who trusts in him, that is Jesus, will never be disgraced. End of quote. Continuing. Hold me up that I may be safe and have regard for your statutes continually. You spurn and set at naught all those who stray from your statutes, for their own lying deceives them and their tricks are in vain. You put away and count as dross all the wicked of the earth, for there is no true metal in them. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles and shudders for fear and reverential and worshipful awe of you, and I am afraid and in dread of your judgments. I have done justice and righteousness. Leave me not to those who would oppress me. Be surety for your servant for good, as Judah was surety for the safety of Benjamin. Let not the proud oppress me. So what is surety? This is explained in Genesis 43, 9. I personally guarantee his safety. You may hold me responsible if I don't bring him, my brother, back to you. Then let me bear the blame forever. That's surety. That's like a cosigner on a loan. That's what it's talking about. Continuing, my eyes fail, watching for your salvation and for the fulfillment of your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your mercy and loving kindness and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding. Give me discernment. Give me comprehension that I may know and discern and be familiar with the character of your testimonies. It is time for the Lord to act. They have frustrated your law. Therefore, I love your commandments more than resplendent gold. Yes, more than perfectly refined gold. Therefore, I esteem as right all, yes, all of your precepts. I hate every false way. Your testimonies are wonderful, far exceeding anything conceived by man. Therefore, my penitent self keeps them hearing receiving, loving, and obeying them. The entrance and unfolding of your words give light. Their unfolding gives understanding, discernment, and comprehension to the simple. I opened my mouth and panted with eager desire, for I longed for your commandments. Look upon me, be merciful unto me, and show me favor, as is your way to those who love your name. Establish my steps and direct them by means of your word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of man, so will I keep your precepts, hearing them, receiving them, loving them, and obeying them. In the book of Luke chapter 174, this beautiful statement was made, We have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear. This has long been the hope of Israel. Continuing. 
Make your face shine with pleasure upon your servant and teach me your statutes. This is explained in Psalms 4, 6. It says, many people say, who will show us better times? And then this statement is made, let your face smile on us, Lord. In other words, you show them they're going to be wrong. It is going to happen if you smile on us. Continuing, streams of water run down my eyes because men do not keep your law. They hear it not, nor receive it. They don't love it, and they don't obey it. Rigidly righteous are you, O Lord, and upright are your judgments and all expressions of your will. You have commanded and appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in great faithfulness. My zeal has consumed me and cut me off because my adversaries have forgotten your words. Your word is very pure. It's tried and well refined. Therefore, your servant loves it. I am small, insignificant, and despised, but I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is truth. Psalms 19 and 9 says it this way, Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. And Jesus in prayer to God the Father said this in John 17, 17, speaking about his disciples. He said, Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. Trouble and anguish have found and taken hold on me. Yet your commandments are my delight. Your righteous testimonies are everlasting and your decrees are binding to eternity. Give me understanding and I shall live. Give me discernment and comprehension and I shall not die. I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep your statutes. I will hear them. I will receive them. I will love them and obey them. I cry to you. Save me that I may keep your testimonies, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. I anticipated the dawning of the morning, and in a childlike prayer I cried, and I hoped in your word. My eyes anticipate the night watches, and I am awake before the cry of the watchman, that I may meditate on your word. Hear my voice according to your steadfast love, O oh Lord, quicken me or make me alive and give me life according to your righteous decrees. They draw near who follow after wrong thinking and persecute me with wickedness. They are far from your law. You are near, O Lord, nearer to me than my foes, and all your commandments are truth. Of old, I have known your testimonies, and for a long time, that is, Therefore, this is a thoroughly established conviction that you have founded them forever. This is something he knew he was convinced of. And once again, we refer to Luke 21, 33, where Jesus said, heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. Consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Revive me and give me life according to your word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not nor hunger for your statutes. Great are your tender mercies and loving kindness. O Lord, give me life according to your ordinances. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. I behold the treacherous, or he's saying I watch the treacherous, and am grieved and loathe them, because they do not respect your law. They don't hear it, they don't receive it, they don't love it, they don't obey it. Consider how I love your precepts. Revive me and give life to me, O Lord, according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth. That is the total of the full meaning of all your individual precepts. And every one of your righteous decrees endures forever. Princes pursue and persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. What he means here is that he dreads violating the words of God far more than he dreads the force of princes or even the king. And in this case, David the psalmist knew what it was like to have King Saul and his sons, princes, try to destroy him and kill him. If you remember back to 1 Samuel 26, 18, where Saul was trying to chase and kill David, 
David said to him, why are you chasing me? What have I done? What is my crime? Continuing, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but your law do I love. Seven times a day and all day long do I praise you because of your righteous decrees. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall offend them or make them stumble. Proverbs 3.2 says, If you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfying. Isaiah 32.17 testified, And this righteousness will bring peace. Yes, it will bring quietness and confidence forever. That's what the Word of God does to us. Continuing, I am hoping and waiting eagerly for your salvation, O Lord, and I do your commandments. Your testimonies have I kept. I've heard them. I've received them. I love them and I obey them. I love them exceedingly. I have observed your precepts and your testimonies for all my ways are fully known before you. Let my mournful cry and supplication come near before you, O Lord. Give me understanding, give me discernment, give me comprehension according to your word of assurance and promise. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips shall pour forth praise with thanksgiving and renewed trust when you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall sing praise for the fulfillment of your word for all your commands commandments are righteous. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I have longed for your salvation. O oh Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you and let your decrees help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek, inquire for, and demand your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Isaiah 53, 6 said, All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him, Jesus, the sins of us all. We know that to be fulfilled in Jesus. Look at what Jesus taught about this. Luke 15, 4. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go search for the one that is lost until he finds it? 1 Peter 2.25 Once you were like sheep who wandered away, but now you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your souls. The end of Psalms 119, the Amplified Bible Version.